I think the thing that excites me most about sampling is the accidents. Um, you can't really predict what you're going to get out. If you really start to work into samples, you can create some incredible accidents. And from that, that might spawn a whole track, it might spawn an idea, it might, it might spawn multiple tracks just from sampling one record. And I love that kind of alchemy and magic of, uh, of being able to sample records. Got into making music through DJing, DJing since I was 15 years old and was always interested in making music and it wasn't until I got hold of a very cheap computer that I started making music and it's been sample based from the word go. I had a copy of Battery version 1 and some drum loops that I downloaded from various different sources and loads of records and that's kind of all I needed at the time, just record it through a DJ, mix it into a computer and then I started from there. In terms of musical genres, everything, everything from jazz, Brazilian, African, reggae, dub, ambient, techno, house, a lot of hip hop, everything really. The first record that I really was happy with and that really got traction I think came out on Wolf Music which was a label started by Matt Neal and Stu Clark. It's a great great record label, you may know it. We were a group of friends who weren't necessarily that into house music or techno or making that style of music. It came from hip hop and soul but it was a record called Tesla I think that was the one that really kind of crossed over for me and that was 2010 on Wolf Music. A lot of kind of lo-fi loops and, 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 and quite quickly processed vocals and samples but really kind of came together very very fast and, and got picked up. Sampling is a key part of my production process. I sample from all over the place, from records, from YouTube, from digital libraries, everything from found sounds, field recordings, whatever. It's a key part of my creative process and I think it's become a key part of my sound as a result of that. Through sampling, resampling, reprocessing, using different pieces of outboard equipment to process the sounds, to create my own loops, to create my own pads, to create my own keys, to create my own basses. And ultimately I think that's what's form of my sound. I like having my own sound and my own samples and my own sound banks to work from because it instantly gives me a kind of creative edge I suppose or, or an originality that other people cannot have. They cannot have the sounds that I have, the sounds that I create essentially from sampling, sampling samples, sampling samples again, resampling, reprocessing um, to get to the point where I have a, a bank of sounds that are only mine. And I think that really helps to define your own sound and, and it's helped me find really that sound that took me quite a long time to, to stumble across. In terms of the tools I use, primarily the door that I use is Ableton, but I use also outboard gear, not expensive outboard gear, Roland SP303, which is a quite a primitive old school sampler. I use the Operator PO33 sampler, I've got an Electron Digitact and record players and digital turntables and anything else I can find. In terms of what's changed for the sampling process for me, it's become a lot faster thanks to software. I'm actually very careful to preserve the sound that you can get from old school samplers from the Akai S950, 2000, 3000 XL. So a lot of the software that I use tries to recreate that sound, recreate that sonic. And a lot of new software, Serato Sample, for example, has uh, revolutionised the sampling process for me, particularly the ability to get unexpected results quite quickly. Really, it's differentiation. You've got to kind of, you've got to stand out from the crowd. There's a lot of people making music now, and there's a lot of people making extremely good music. So you really got to be good. You've got to be original, and you really got to stand out from the crowd. So anything you can add, custom sounds, custom kind of. Any, any little touches you can add to, to really bring your music alive, I think is so key now. My relationship with Tool Room came about because, well, first of all, I was born in Maidstone, so it's, uh, it's full circle for me. George is a good mate of mine. He was the first person that sold me records, actually, back in plastic surgery in Maidstone. And uh, I used to go and see him DJ every Friday night, so he's one of the main reasons I got into this in the first place. So thanks to George for that. and. Um, Owen as well, who's a big part of the Tool Room crew. And I, got, I reconnected with George actually over email. He's an 
asking for tracks, which was nice. I sent him a few and he signed one for the compilation, the Ibiza Touring compilation that came out. And there's a track called Shot Clock and Mark's been supporting my Visions dub on his radio shows quite heavily. So it, it, the relationship is, is great with Touring now and all the demos I get, I'm sending their way. I'm very excited to be asked to do this. Got a huge amount of respect for Fader Pro. Really a chance to kind of explore the way I work and document it. I know it's not something I've ever done. It's quite a, a, a random, natural process for me. So be able to be able to do this and, and film it is, uh, is an honour. The course is about creative sampling, about looking at workflow, about looking at interesting ways to use equipment that you might not already know about, about creating custom sound sets, about trying to find your own sound, about defining your own sound by using sounds from different places. I think the main thing I can bring to this really is, uh, is very wide influences in terms of music and bringing them into other genres, which is, is definitely something worth exploring. It doesn't have to be a soul and a disco record to make a house record or a techno record. It could be anything. It could be a jazz record. It could be a dub reggae record. It could be anything. And really, I think that's the point. Don't restrict in terms of where you are influenced, what you are influenced by, the sources of the music that you're influenced by. And it can come from anywhere. So open up those creative channels, put everything into a sampler and see what comes out because you don't know what's going to come out, basically. Yeah.